And welcome aboard, everybody, here to the Sports Talk Nation. Michael Cohen here with you. Quick recap of Super Bowl 55 as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeated the Kansas City Chiefs last night, 31 to 9. And really a game that, look, we all thought this game was going to be com very, very competitive, very, very close, very tight. And it did not turn out that way. It was, it was complete domination by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, especially, especially towards the latter part of the game where the Buccaneer defense absolutely manhandled the Kansas City Chiefs offense. We'll get into more of that in just a moment. But first of all, when you look at these kind of when you look at this kind this game, a lot of people came to the Super Bowl talking about legacies. Uh, Tom Brady's legacy against Patrick Mahomes' legacy. Uh, should if, if Mahomes had won the Super Bowl, he would have been at two rings, would have won back-to-back -back Super Bowls, and would only be four back of Brady for uh, obviously the most by a quarterback all time. But of course, as we all know, Brady gets the win. He now has seven rings to just the one by Mahomes, and you have to sit there and kind of just sit back and take and take a look at this. And I know that for a lot of fans here, of course, in the tri-state area uh, in New York. A lot of Jet fans, Giant fans don't like Tom Brady, obviously, for, for many, many reasons, connected to his time with the New England Patriots. But you have to sit back and just in, in awe in a lot of ways of what this guy's been able to do for the last 21 years. Uh, all, the, all the championship game appearances, all the appearances, now 10 appearances in the Super Bowl, and now seven victories, and now continuing to do this and playing well at the age of 43, and he has no intention whatsoever of retiring as he said he's going to complete continue to play going to next year so uh he just continues to find ways to defy the odds and continues to put up gaudy numbers and with a very very talented uh, group of players around him certainly one of the best teams as far as talent is concerned that he has been on maybe ever certainly since the 07 Patriots the team that went 16 and 0 I mean you're talking about guys like obviously Chris Godwin who's going to be a free agent this year uh, Mike Evans you know bringing back Gronk out of retirement and then you have the two big backs Leonard Fournette and Rick and uh, Ronald Jones I mean, that's probably the best running back tandem that he's had behind him, maybe ever for that matter. So he has had so many different kind of weapons around him this year with Tampa Bay. And really, it was a strange year for the Bucks because there are points this year where it didn't look too good. I mean, they had lost a couple in a row in November. Uh, the Monday night game to the L.A. Rams, and then it was backed up by the loss to the Kansas City Chiefs on Thanksgiving Day weekend. They were 7-5, and five, and it looked like trouble in paradise, but they you got to give Brady credit for adjusting you got to give the Buccaneers credit for adjusting with Brady and they figured it out and put together one heck of a run they really did uh you know winning winning back-to-back -back road games in the playoffs against the Saints Drew Brees in that team and then against the Packers who were a juggernaut earlier this year and Aaron Rodgers who was an MVP of course to beat those two teams and then advance to the Super Bowl and beat the defending champions in the Chiefs, you got to give them, they, they deserve a lot of credit. And it's, it's something that we may never, as far as Brady is concerned, we'll probably never see anything like this again where we see one player dominate the way he has dominated the sport for so many years and so now so many generations for that matter. Uh, seven rings, and he may not be done at that point. He may end up getting eight, nine before he is done, for that matter. And one thing that I find very ironic in all of this is that in some ways, in many ways, this season, this run by the Buccaneers, by Tom Brady, by uh, Rob Gronkowski, is kind of a repudiation of Bill Belichick in a lot of ways. Um, it was very well documented, the rift at times that existed between Brady and Belichick, going back to... Uh, when Jimmy Garoppolo was drafted by the Patriots. And there were times near the end, the last few years there together, that they didn't get along too well. It's been reported a lot. And this was all about Brady going out there and trying to prove that he could win without Bill Belichick. Belichick tried to do the same thing by trying to win with Cam Newton. And we all know how that turned out, as Belichick basically outsmarted himself with a Cam Newton, who at this point looks like he is finished. And Brady goes right ahead and wins another Super Bowl. So it basically shows you who was the master, the grandmaster of that dynasty with the Patriots. It was, in fact, Tom Brady. It gets to a point where you have to sit back and really appreciate what you're seeing. Because what we're seeing is, is historic, and we may never see it again. Mahomes, okay, yes, he did take the loss. Great quarterbacks have lost this game before in the past, as we all know, including Brady himself, who lost three Super Bowls. But... 
as we all know, it's very, very hard to get back to this spot. Uh, you know, Dan Marino, as we all know, everyone talks about the Dan Marino saga. Went to one Super Bowl in 84 and never went back. Lost that game to the 49ers. More recently, in recent years, we've seen Breeze, we've seen Rodgers, two of the best quarterbacks in this sport, win Super Bowls back-to-back -back years in 09 and 10, 2009-2010. Neither one has come has gotten back to the Super Bowl since. And Breeze's career is going is more, more likely over. He's going to retire. So... I expect Patrick Mahomes to eventually get back to the Super Bowl. Could be as far, as soon as next year, for that matter. Uh, but it's going to be hard for him to sustain that kind of success. It's going to be hard for anybody, for that matter, to sustain sustain the the kind of success that we've seen Brady sustain for twenty years and to stay healthy for that long and to play at such a high level. I mean, think about this: we saw Peyton Manning just five years ago. In the Super Bowl, his last Super Bowl, his last game, and he looked like a shell of his former self at an age of, what, 38, 39? This guy's at 43 years old, going on 44, and he looks like he's 10 years younger, for that matter, at least playing at that level. It's incredible. It's really it's really something that we've never seen and probably will never see again. So I think we all have to kind of sit back and just appreciate what we've seen from that standpoint. A couple things that stand out for me is, obviously... The way this Buccaneers defense play, they were phenomenal in this game. Uh, Todd Bowles, and I know, yes, the former Jets head coach, Todd Bowles. I see, you know, first let me just say this. I've seen a lot of people out there saying, man, the Jets uh, really made a mistake, should not have fired Todd Bowles. And uh, he, what were they thinking, firing Todd Bowles and going with Adam Gase? We all know that Adam Gase was a failure as a head coach. Um, facts are... Todd Bowles struggled as a head coach with the Jets, went 26 and 40, had a tough time. Yes, had some tough circumstances here in New York with a team that was trying to rebuild in, in a couple of different ways, but it did not work out for him here as a head coach. He is going to get another opportunity, you would have to imagine, at some point down the road, but you got to give him a lot. Of, but he had a tremendous game plan, and their defense was fantastic, and they played cover two for most of the game, and they were all over Mahomes. He was running around the field. Uh, running backwards, trying to run sideline to sideline, trying to find open man, and he couldn't find anybody. Uh, Devin White had, was, had a huge, huge day with 12 tackles, had a pick. Uh, not to come sue, had one and a half sacks. Shaq Barrett had a sack. Uh, even though, and, and even though he didn't get any sacks, Jason Pierre-Paul, he was disrupting that offensive line and Patrick Mahomes all day as well with three tackles himself. And that goes to again to the point of the Chiefs, who had a lot of issues on the offensive line without their left tackle, and that was a big problem. The Buccaneers took a full advantage of a Chiefs offensive line that was not healthy, and it paid off big dividends for the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl. Uh, just taking a look at a, some rough stats here for you. First quarter, Kansas City only 53 yards of offense in the first quarter. Second quarter, only 68 yards of offense. Really, they had nothing going for them. And when all you can do is set up for field goals in a game like this against a team that's just as good as you are, just as powerful as you are in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it isn't going to go very well, as we all know. And... Uh, I think really the key draw, there are a couple key, key moments in this game, but one of the big moments in this game for me was very early in the game, first quarter, Kansas City is moving the football, and they get to the Tampa Bay 30-yard line with a first and 10. Game is scoreless at this point, and the Chiefs can't move the football after the, at all after that. Uh, it was a minus, they, Edwards Hilaire had the only gain at all, which was minus one yard, and Kansas City had to settle for a field goal to take a 3 nothing lead, and then what, is the, what do the Bucks do? Brady takes the Buccaneers right down the field and gets the touchdown to Rob Gronkowski. It's like good old days again for Gronkowski and Brady, for that matter. Two touch that was the first of two touchdowns, as they would eventually take a 14 to three lead, and you really almost could turn out the lights at that point. Um, the competitive nature of that game was really coming apart at that point. And I know, I know, I'm going to bring the penalties now as well. Six penalties against the against the Kansas City Chiefs led to Tampa Bay first downs. It led to second chance opportunities for Brady, who, of course, is going to take advantage of that, and he did. Uh, of course, that second touchdown was a big part of the reason why the reason that happened was because of a couple of was because of a couple of holding penalties. Look. In the games like this, I would like to see the referees keep the uh, keep the hand handkerchiefs in their po pockets, uh, especially the last game of the year. You want you want to just let the players play the game, but the Chiefs were very handsy. 
The officials were looking for it, and really the officials are willing to throw the flags on just about anything. I mean, look at the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that was called on the Buccaneers near, near the end of the game. I mean, come on, really? It's the end of the game. Let Just move on. Let it go. You don't need to throw flags on this. So... In my mind, yeah, the, the officials are a little bit too, uh, a little bit too willing to throw the flags in a lot of situations. But again, when you are very handsy, as the Chiefs were in this game, and they lost their cool, as you saw Tyron Matthew go lose his cool completely and get into an argument with Tom Brady, that was very unchiefs like, and that was really when the the Buccaneers, not just the referees, but the Buccaneers, got into the Chiefs' head, and they lost complete control of the game. So the question, of course, is going to be what's next for the Buccaneers. Uh, there was a lot of rumors yesterday that had the Buccaneers won, that Bruce Aarons, the head coach, would have, st- would have stepped down and made Todd Bowles the head coach. Um, then I heard earlier today that that was not true, that Aarons will be back. I would imagine that Aarons will be back uh, as the head coach of the Buccaneers. If he's, if he's a student of history, which I think he would be, and he has a chance to go for a second ring with Tom Brady, with this uh, defense led by Todd Bowles. I think he's going to try to take full advantage of that. Hey, look, sometimes when you get the two rings, you have an inside track on getting to potentially to a Hall of Fame. So I think he'll be back. Kansas City, they got to get healthy. they got to get their offensive line healthy. But I know that a lot of people are going to pick, look at Buffalo, look at the Chargers, look at the Titans. You know that which teams are gonna, people are going to look at net right now, for that matter. But you would have to imagine the Chiefs are still going to be a favorite to get back in the AFC, for that for that matter, uh, next year. But we'll see what happens as we now move into the offseason. Uh, it's going to be an interesting offseason, folks. We all know about the quarterback carousel that's going on right now. A lot of crazy rumors right now. You know, Carson Wentz potentially going from Philadelphia to either Indianapolis or Chicago. Sam Darnold could be on the move from the Jets. Could maybe, I've heard San Francisco get thrown out there with that Juice and Lock and Forward report. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo could be on his on the way out in San Francisco. So there's going to be a lot of a lot of moving pieces this offseason. Should be very interesting to watch. But again, in the interim, it is a, we have a new champion in the Buccaneers. But of course, it's the same old song with Tom Brady hoisting the Lombardi Trophy. Folks, thanks for tuning in and watching here on the Sports Talk Nation. Remember to like and subscribe here to the channel. And follow us online at OpenMikeNJ on Twitter. And also, remember to follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Program. Talk to you next time. Thank you.